Hi, Pat the Podcast Editor here. Perceived value may not be a term you've heard before, but rest assured after this episode, it will become your number one tool for increasing your prices. You'll hear real world examples of how perceived value can help your business. The Eurostar in 2003 invested millions in improving the tracks and making the train 20 minutes faster from London to Paris. They could have invested a lot less in making the quality of the journey better, like installing Wi-Fi or like entertainment systems. And Lloyd shares his personal issue with taxi drivers. Tell me like, you, you've ordered a taxi, what concerns you about I waiting for- I can't take my kebab in it. Yeah. Can't take your kebab in it? Last night. Yeah. yeah. And the driver said I smelt like shepherd's pie, but it was actually a kebab. <laughs> right, let's get stuck in. Notepads at the ready. This is episode 111 of the Business Anchors podcast. We're just a couple of business anchors. Welcome to the Business Anchors podcast. This jingle is slightly too long. This jingle is slightly too long. Dad, why are we doing an episode about people charging more when we've previously slated people for saying people should increase their prices? Well, that's a good question. And I, I still think it's shit advice to just tell everyone to charge more. I think this is something we've seen like a lot is just increase your prices. But I still think that's shit advice. However, increase I re- your prices. No, <laughs> yes, but wait, Lloyd, <laughs> okay, give sorry. me a chance. Okay. So I recently watched, and I, I please, I recommend you all watch this. I please, I recommend you watch this. Shut up. Okay. Rory Sutherland. Uh, on the Diary of a CEO podcast yeah. is one of the best pieces of content I've consumed in a long time. And he, his whole, throughout this whole like two hour podcast, his key message was about perceived value and the importance of perceived value and how increasing the perceived value of your products and services can increase, allow you to charge more. Okay. Nice. Um. So yeah, I guess like, if I was to say to you, Lloyd, how mm. do you uh, provide more value? Yeah. As a, as a company, you need to provide more value to be able to charge more. Yeah. How how would you go about providing more value? Um, well, e- either improving the quality of the work you're, you're delivering or the product you're delivering in some mm. way or improve like customer service in some way, I guess, or, um, or like reducing bad thing like reducing wait times or reducing like Mm. negative parts that would be where my brain would go yes and that would be where i would go as well Mm. until listening to this episode okay well i haven't listened to it that's why i was going so so you're talking about like increasing the value in terms of like tangible things of a product or service to be able to charge more yeah so like you said increasing the quality like making your whatever you do provide better results Mm -hmm. faster and that kind of thing like but he talks a lot about um perceived value Mm -hmm. so you can actually increase the value of your product or service by changing the way people think about it okay so 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 think think about this like us at Knowlton just trying to be meta again on the podcast Mm -hmm. if we could if we got better at changing the way people think about the exact same products or services we provide Mm -hmm. we could charge more without changing anything like yeah. if we get better at demonstrating and showing yeah. the value people get from working with Knowlton, we could charge more rather than having to like increase the quality of what we're doing by heart, by getting better equipment and that kind of thing. Yeah. So without having to, obviously as a separate thing, it's always going to be positive to improve mm. what you're doing, but you're saying improving how people feel about what they're getting from your product or service can also do that without actually having to yeah right and, he, and, and in this in this podcast episode he's like just such an interesting guy to listen to because mm. every point he shares and you'll get this when you listen to the episode he he provides some really interesting examples to back up his point mm-hmm. so one of the really interesting examples he shares is to do with the Eurostar. yeah so the Eurostar. um in in 2003 they invested millions to develop uh hs1 to uh decrease the time it took to get from london to paris right yeah. millions and millions and millions of pounds to um reduce the time it takes to get from london to paris by 20 minutes okay right, okay which obviously like that's good right people want to get places quicker yeah, yeah however he gave a really interesting example he was like rather than trying to 
uh, make the journey quicker by improving the the train speed through like better tracks and better yeah. quality trains that can get there faster. He said, why don't you invest that money in improving the quality of the journey so that people don't mind it taking longer? Yeah. Right? So he, he gave this funny example of like, rather than investing those millions in improving the tracks and stuff, for much less, you could hire all of the um, best models in the world and get them to serve caviar and champagne on the journey yeah. instead of investing those millions and millions of pounds. That's interesting. So you, you're actually just making the journey good and then people are like, this is an excellent yeah. service rather than keeping the journey just boring and it doing what it's supposed to do yeah. and being shorter. Yeah. Exactly. And another really, really interesting example he shared, right? So taxis. Mm -hmm. So let's play this out, Lloyd. Tell me when you, when you order a taxi, yeah. tell me um, what you, what shit about it. Tell me like you, you, you've ordered a taxi, you're trying yeah. to wait for it. What, what, what concerns you about I waiting for it? Can't take my kebab in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can't take your kebab in it. Last night. Yeah. yeah. And the driver said I smelt like shepherd's pie but it was actually a kebab <laughs> okay yeah mm -hmm. right but, but what more, else more relevant things more more relevant okay. like to, to like more people yeah. that don't have kebabs. yeah um what's rubbish about it uh like waiting around you don't don't necessarily know when it's going to come so it's hard to plan yes lloyd that's the answer i wanted okay not not so, the shepherd's pie not the shepherd's okay. pie. so the uncertainty mm -hmm. of not knowing when your taxi will arrive is actually the shitty part about ordering taxis mm -hmm. if you think about it, like because there's such a difference in and i don't know if you've experienced this you order a taxi sometimes they say it'll be five minutes and it's five minutes sometimes they'll say it'll be five minutes and it's an hour so the uncertainty yeah. of thinking like i've got to wait for this taxi when do I go outside? I don't know if I've got time to quickly have a shower or go to the toilet because it could be five minutes or trying 40 to make minutes. Trying plans with friends and people traveling with you and you, you can't really do it. So exactly. Might, yeah. And then Uber was invented. So what Uber did was it took away that uncertainty. It allowed you to see exactly where that taxi was on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. So you knew if it was 15 minutes away and you had time to have a shower or you knew if it was an hour away and you had time to sit down, have a nice drink. And you could see like, oh, I'm not going to go outside yet because I can see mm -hmm. it's in that road, which is 15 minutes away. I'm going to chill for a bit longer. Even if it took an hour, that's fine. I was just going to say that. So even if it's you're waiting longer than you would have done, mm. it's the, the perceived value that you've got, it's still better for you because you know when so you can build your activities yeah. around it so that it works out yeah mm. and like these the, the thing Rory Sutherland speaks about which is really interesting is these psychological reframings of a situation are a marketer's superpower like you, you can you don't need to invest millions in making your train 20 minutes faster you can just think of the person who's sitting on the train what can you do to reframe that situation so they're not thinking it's a shitty journey that they're actually enjoying the quality of that journey rather like than providing entertainment systems and stuff you know like some airlines especially long-haul flight mm. there'll be like loads of games you can play and stuff that's one of those things of like well we're not gonna invest billions in planes that will be faster yeah but we are gonna let him play chess with his brother who's in the seat the other side of the plane yeah. on this exactly. games console in the seat or whatever and talking of uh, planes actually he gave another example which is really interesting he talked about so when you get a plane somewhere you know there's there's two options when you land there's mm -hmm. either you get that cool pod thing that attaches to the plane you can nicely walk and you're like in the oh, terminal yeah. yeah or you get the buses you go down the steps and go again and, and whenever it. whenever anyone sees the buses are coming mm -hmm. it's like a shitty experience you're like oh for god's sake mm -hmm. i've got to get the buses to the terminal that's going to you know mm. stand there it's really cramped and he said something a a i was gonna say plane driver then um a pilot <laughs> <laughs> a pilot did once um on his journey which completely reframed the situation was before the when they landed before the the buses came he said um i've got some good news and some bad news bad news is we've got buses uh, instead of the pod thing mm -hmm. the good news is the buses actually take you directly to your terminal so you don't have to have that long walking journey. And yeah. he was like, and, and then his, he, he thought, oh, great, we've got the buses. Mm. Because that 
that plane driver, pilot, <laughs> had reframed the situation, mm. it completely changed the way he felt about it. And and the thing with marketing and like and and customer experience is all to do with emotion and how we feel. Mm. So if you can if you can change someone's emotions from a negative shitty emotion to like ah. Oh, that's good. We can get the buses and we can get directly to the terminal. Yeah. It completely changes the way people think about your company, and your brand. And I think as marketers, we need to be like learning these lessons. And even when watching it, I was thinking like, how can we reframe what we do at Knowlton to be more positive do you, than... Do you want to hear one thing that I think we actually do, uh, how we change perceived value for our customers already? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> um, Go on. I quite sometimes... Um, customers want things faster, so mm -hmm. they they want uh, they want us to complete a project faster than we kind of think we should. If you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. And um, earlier in my career, when that happened, I would kind of try and just say, "Look, we, you know, it's hard for us with the resources to get it done that quick. So we'll try, but yeah. you know, it, it might take longer." And and now. This is actually the reality, but now when I um, communicate this, I say, uh, to be able to do the best job we can for you, we want to put in this time yes. that will make uh, make sure we have the time mm -hmm. to do the whole creative process and everything. And that's actually the truth. Yeah. But before, so clever. Before, I wasn't communicating that, so it just seemed like, to, oh, it's taking to them, longer. I guess, oh, they can't do it that fast. That's not that great. But now when I actually... I communicate it's because we are trying to do the best job we yeah. can for you and we don't want to skip like elements of the process to try and do it quicker yeah like you might get the marketing campaign live two weeks earlier but actually it's 25 percent worse and you'll yeah. get 25 percent worse and th this is the clever thing so now our customers actually want it to take longer because they want us to put in the extra time to do a good job because yeah. you've reframed that situation mm. So interesting, like, it's, yeah. A clip from the podcast I've seen, so I haven't listened to this Rory mm. Sutherland podcast yet, but I, I saw a clip um, somewhere, and he said about the NHS and waiting times. He said he would uh, change it to preparation time. So at the moment, yes. it's like, a oh, waiting time for my hip operation is, uh, like, 12 months or whatever it is, mm. and people are like, oh, my God, that's so... Got to wait NH that NHS long. Is so bad, got to wait that long. And he said a lot of operations... Um, if you said as preparation, to, if you changed it from waiting time to preparation time, he said there are there are actually things you can do while you're waiting to increase the likelihood of success in the operation. Yep. So if you might be, this might not be medically correct. So if you're a yeah. doctor, like ignore me. But say if you're a stone lighter, it might mean that your recovery from the hip hop, you'd be able to get on your feet quicker because there's less weight. They could say, right, the preparation mm -hmm. time is 12 months. If you reduce your weight, by one stone um and if you get more active and build up the muscles around your hip before we do it um the mm. likelihood of success would go up 20 percent. Yeah. then you're like oh yeah i've got this 12 months preparation time and i've got the chance of it being 20 percent more likely to be a success completely changes the way you feel about that situation and yeah. this is the thing again like it's your emotions rather than being like this is shit i've got a weight ages you think this is great i can prepare and get a better result yeah it's so interesting how you can change the way people it, feel. And also it changed the perceived value and the actual value in a situation yeah, like that. Yeah. So the perceived value is like, oh, this is much better. But the actual value, you're actually using mm. that as an opportunity as well. I'm saying, oh, it, it genuinely is because if you do yeah. this stuff, it will yeah. give you a better result. And that's the same in our, our case, like I was saying, just communicating the reality of like, we don't want to have mm. a shorter time to do to to brainstorm ideas. We don't want to skip that yeah. third creative meeting and only do two. We want to do all of that to get the better yeah. result. And something something I think every listener or watcher of the podcast can can action and actually as a marketer or a business owner, you can implement today to increase your perceived value is showing the work that goes into providing your product or service. Something that's been a game changer for us as a, a marketing agency, for example, on video shoots is creating BTS or behind the scenes content that shows you, like we do a series now called Inside Knowlton, where we specifically have um, someone from our team produce behind the scenes content, showing our team in action, showing them on a shoot, showing them all of the work that goes into producing that 60 second video. Cause like, even today, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, can I have a one minute video? Yeah, just make the video. 
it's not that simple. You have to write all the scripts, source actors, source locations, source props, um, do various revisions of that script, present and communicate with the client, make any relevant changes, then actually shoot the content, you know, across multiple days, edit the content, do all the post-production, sound design, color grading. There's so much that goes into making what you just see as a 60 second mm. video. If you can show that to your customer before they invest in working with you, then the, the perceived value increases. Or even if like you manufacture pens, someone just looks at a pen and thinks that's just a pen. But if you show the craftsmanship that goes into like hand making that pen, mm -hmm. all the work that goes into designing it, they think like, wow, like all the work that's going into making that pen I, I now perceive that that's worth paying double as much for because of all the work that's gone that's into it. That's why like smaller producers of stuff like people on Etsy, I think can charge some, some of the price on Etsy I, I look at and I think it's crazy. Mm. But because they kind of show you that this has been made by hand by one person and then then like your perceived value of that table is higher because you're like, oh, this isn't just something that like coming out of an Ikea factory. Like I can see how they've made this and put all this time in. So your perceived value is higher. Yeah. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's really common. And we, we know, so we used to um, kind of ask clients, oh, do you want to be on the shoot or not? And just kind of leave it for them to decide. Mm. Now we ask Encourage any clients it. that we work with from the UK. So sometimes the international ones, we understand they're not going to mm. come over for the shoot, but um, if they're in the UK, we say, oh, can you can you please be on set? Because we know that when they see that there are uh, a crew of 17 people and they see all the, the equipment that we've invested in to make sure that we produce the best thing we can for them, the perceived value is higher than if they just see the end product. Because then they know it's good and they're like, okay, that's good. But yeah. they don't understand what went into it. For all they know, there's just one one girl behind the camera Mm. just operating the camera yeah. on, on her own and that's the resources that gone into it when they see all the effort and they they understand because mm. you probably your product or service your customers probably don't understand how you do what you do they just mm. want the end result so once they understand the work the expertise the financial investment into equipment or whatever yeah. that goes into it the perceived value is so much higher and like uh, uh, other ways that you as a listener can implement this with your company is it doesn't like we we now go into the effort of producing these really highly produced behind the scenes videos which takes a, a certain amount of resource but we've built up to that you could do like a text-based post on linkedin talking about the process you go through with a customer from them getting in touch with you to delivering whatever it is you deliver your accountancy services or your product or you could you could take a photo of you um like designing your little Etsy product showing and then, a, and then doing a post like this is part of the process I go through when looking at a new designing a new product for my range. I, I do this research, then I do this and I do that. And like you could quite easily create any kind of content just talking about that process. I think that's one of the key takeaways from this podcast. You may be listening, thinking like, yes, these examples of Eurostar and that are great, but how do I actually do this? You demonstrate the work that goes into producing your product or service. That's that's the biggest thing. Um, another really interesting example. I was going to say, have you got more any more examples before? We yeah. Go? So Tesla. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tesla have like plastic seats. Mm -hmm. So you'd think plastic seat. Okay, great. It's a plastic seat. Do you know what they call them? No. Vegan leather. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they've they've reframed something that would just be seen in a, as a bog standard plastic seat to something that seems appealing in 2022. Yeah. Having vegan leather uh, in your car rather is than... A, it's so simple, isn't it? But so clever. I think something that... Uh, an example that I have seen a lot. So I think both Samsung and Apple have done this where they've basically shot movies on their phones to demonstrate how good the camera is. Mm. But the reality... And, and I think that does make lots of people go, oh my God, it's good enough to shoot a movie on. Like, mm. that's great. The reality is... I'm not going to shoot a movie on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that's not something that's actually valuable to me, yeah. but because I've seen that it can be done, yeah. I perceive that value. Oh my God, that must be amazing. Yeah. I'm going to buy it. It's, it's yeah. That, that made me think of um, like uh, iPhone cases. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the videos where they like, go up on like the top of a skyscraper and lob it off? Yeah. And then it just, it goes on the floor and it's like, it's fine. Like you're never going to lob your phone off a skyscraper, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's demonstrating like, 
what that can withstand. One of the most widely used versions of this as well is the drive through. So when I was younger and drive throughs were a thing, um, there was one window that you ordered at, you then waited there and then you paid there, mm. you got your food there. So it felt like you were waiting for quite a long time. Mm. But now, because half of these drive throughs now, you've got about 12 windows. You're like, oh, like, I'm progressing. Okay, just go to the next one and say hello mm. to that one and then go to the next one. And then that's that thing of like, because you feel like yeah. you're you're going through this process and then by the time you get to that window, mm. it's, it's there immediately. Yeah. Wow. But actually it's the same time, but yeah. you've just gone through and paid one guy and then... And in, 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 in a like a weird version of that, is to do with communication like if you get good at communicating to your customers what like what step they are in the process they're going to feel much better knowing the journey and knowing where they are whereas if they're like oh i haven't heard from them in a while like what, what's going on whereas if they think i know i'm in phase two of this thing that's going to take yeah. six weeks that's fine because i've you know they've communicated and i think this is something we've got better at as an agency as we've we never used to communicate anything to our customers we just like we we, we know we're doing good stuff so they don't yeah. need to know we're, that we're we're doing what we're supposed to do and it's going to be great and something we uh, something we actually do more recently like positive reinforcement so so whenever we our campaigns are running and we see either someone commenting like this actually happened this week Someone commented, I shared one of our client videos and someone commented on it saying, oh, I love this ad. When I saw this, I bought, I invested in this service and it's like quite a high value service. I instantly like tagged the founder of the company who we work with, like, ha, hope you see this. <laughs> yeah. And it tagged him um, because you're, you're reinforcing. And then, and then it's these small things of thinking mm. that's a worthwhile investment because you're, you're showing that. I do the same quite often if I see really outstanding results so if we might have a campaign for lead generation and mm. we create a lead from a, a massive business it could be a massive opportunity yeah. or um a, a really big sale that's much bigger than others for products or whatever um i i make the effort to email or slack or whatsapp the um my contact at that client and just be kind of like oh great great result yesterday with the lead from whatever or like oh great to see that there was that 700 pound order yesterday and it's like they they will all they will see that mm. so really it's like why am i doing this extra communication but the perceived value you're you're mm. just putting more positive stuff in front yeah. of them more times and and do it so for example doing that for us is worth hundreds of thousands of pounds because there's some customers that we do that to that have been with us for years and years and years because we're constantly showing them why it's worth working with Knowlton. Mm. Even if just behind the scenes that stuff was happening and we were just like, that's great. That wouldn't be as effective as constantly, yeah. you know, over over the year showing like, look, this is why it's good working with us. Well, and, I, I, and yeah, I was going to say, sorry, I think previously we've lost customers because they uh, didn't perceive the value to be high enough. And it was just because it wasn't that we weren't doing great work. Mm. We just weren't communicating mm. with them that we were doing it. Yeah. And I think that's been a big change. Now our communication is so much better. They can constantly see the value. Yeah. So they want to work with us in the future. They, they have no doubts mm. of the value. Um, so it's, it's interesting how communication with customers yeah. can affect perceived value in such a massive way. Another, just one final example. Um, there was a viral post that went viral on LinkedIn a little while ago to the water bottle. Don't know if you remember, did you see that? Don't no. Think so. so this post, loads of people copied it and it was a thing, but it, it, basically someone was saying like a water bottle in Tesco is worth 30 P or whatever it is. A water bottle in an airport is worth two pounds. Mm -hmm. A water bottle in, uh, like, uh, for example, I went, when I went to Ibiza a few years ago, a club called High in Ibiza, it was literally £10 for a water bottle. Wow. But you you kind of just think, although, like, it's annoying and that's shit, in your mind, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to an expensive club in Ibiza, water bottle's going to be a tenner. If you saw a water bottle for a, a bottle of water for a tenner in Tesco, you would, like, yeah. go mad. Because it's that's... like, what on earth? Whereas if you're in a like a premium club in Ibiza, you'd be like, oh yeah, it's a tenner. Mm. It's interesting how you, the different situations, you perceive yeah. the same thing as different, different yeah. value. Yeah, that was, that was. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that one. Yeah. Thank you. So Dan, just the, the um, podcast episode that inspired you, where can people find that just, one? Just uh, go on YouTube and search Rory Sutherland, the diary of a CEO. Um, and yeah, just definitely go and listen to that because it, 
so interesting yeah and then after that listen to every business anchors podcast episode that you haven't listened to probably before that before Uh, yeah actually before yeah there's 111 so just make sure don't don't move on to another podcast until you listen to absolutely everyone yeah and then become a customer of nelson yeah please (laughs) <laughs> good call to action yeah marketing expert be a, be a customer <laughs> yeah okay so shall we see, see you in your ears, ears next week? week yeah i think so okay